just a huge hot flash up the leg. Sometimes it's a sharp jabbing pain. It's pain and discomfort in my feet. Sound familiar? For many people with diabetes, pain is a constant presence, but it doesn't have to be. When your body's hurting and your body's in pain, it's trying to talk to you. Football great Art Shell pays attention to his diabetes. He takes action to keep it under control. So does television and movie actress Park Overall. You can too. With their help and the help of experts and patients like you, you're going to find out about managing diabetic nerve pain so you can live your life to the fullest. Robert, like millions of people, has diabetes. To fight it, he draws on his career as a high school principal. Well, being an educator, you realize there's power in knowledge. So I think when it comes to diabetes, learning as much as you can about your illness uh, is to your advantage, and then learning about the kinds of actions that you can take in, in dealing with the goal, which is control. But even people who are doing their best to manage diabetes can experience pain that just doesn't go away. At night, the discomfort that I felt in my feet were, were sharp pains, like a little stabbing pain that I'd feel in my toes or in, in some, some part of my foot. In the feet, legs, arms, hands, the pain can really pull you down. There are days I cannot make it down the hall. When Park Overall's diabetic nerve pain acts up, she has to struggle to do the work she loves in front of the camera, on stage, and on her ranch. I have no patience, I have no energy, and I hurt. Everything hurts. Park Overall has the kind of diabetes called type 1, but diabetic nerve pain can affect people with type 2 diabetes as well. You might also hear this kind of pain called by its clinical name, the pain of DPN. DPN is diabetic peripheral neuropathy. Diabetic means it's related to diabetes. Peripheral means away from the center of the body. Neuropathy means a disease of the nervous system, the system that carries messages to and from the brain. So this program is about diabetes-related damage to nerves. The reasons why people get nerve damage aren't completely understood, but what is known is that when diabetes is not well controlled, the very tiny blood vessels that nourish the nerve stop functioning properly and lead to nerve damage. The result of that nerve damage can range from numbness to tenderness, tingling, burning, aching, throbbing, cramping, to jabbing and shooting pain. People like Park Overall who have had diabetes for a long time are more likely to have diabetic nerve pain. It's associated with exposure to high levels of sugar in the bloodstream. And diabetes affects the body's ability to handle sugar. So while there are different kinds of diabetes, they can all lead to nerve damage and pain, especially if the diabetes gets out of control. Managing pain has to do with managing diabetes. No management, a lot of pain. People who have uncontrolled diabetes are the most at risk for developing peripheral neuropathy. And unfortunately, sometimes what happens is that the person comes to us with neuropathy as the first symptom of diabetes. We know that in most cases, that diabetes has probably been there for years, maybe 10 to 15 years, and undiagnosed. That's an important point. If you don't get tested, it's possible to have high blood sugar for a long time without realizing it. All the while, it's doing damage inside your body. Well, unfortunately, there are no warning signs when the sugar is out of control. As a matter of fact, people can go for often years 
with elevations in sugar that they didn't feel made any, made any change in their health at all. And meanwhile, it's been damaging their circulation or their vision or their skin or their kidneys. All of a sudden, the symptoms start showing up and you say, diabetes, you know, what is that? Art Shell first found out he had diabetes on the football field. A champion athlete and a pioneering coach, he was the first African-American coach in the NFL, but he was having trouble seeing his team. Then I'd look out over the field and I could barely see across the field, it was blurry. I went to the trainer and I said, you know, I'm going to the bathroom a lot, my eyes are, are blurry. Then he called the team doctor, the team doctor said, I want you to go get a blood, blood test right now. And then when I went down to get the blood test. And so I went back to practice. And I'm out on a practice field, you know, running practice. And I remember my head trainer walking out there saying, come here. He said, do you know how, how, how high your blood sugar is? I said, no. And then he told me, you need to call a doctor. So I went to talk to the doctor. The doctor said, you got to go to the hospital. Your blood sugar is way up there. You should be in a coma. The doctor didn't have to tell Art how serious it was. Diabetes had taken his father and his sister. So she, she died, she died young, too young. So Art Shell is committed to educating other people about diabetes, even as he manages the disease himself. I'm always in contact with my doctor to try to make sure that my numbers are okay, that I'm doing what I need to do in order to control my diabetes. Art Shell has quite a few of the risk factors for diabetic nerve pain. He has had diabetes for a long time. He's over 40, he has high blood pressure, and his weight has been an issue. Uh, I had to make sure I try to control uh, my growth as far as my weight is concerned. Another risk factor is trouble controlling blood sugar. That's because, as we have said, there is a connection between a high level of blood sugar and diabetic nerve pain. With diabetic nerve damage, the nervous system can become oversensitive. So even a slight touch or tiny movement can cause pain. The nerve damage cannot be repaired, but the symptoms can be treated. The smart thing to do is to always to let your doctor know what's going on with you. Your body's talking to you. Tony has had type 2 diabetes since he was 37, but it has not always been under control. To tell you the truth, I didn't do what the doctor told me to do, and eventually it, it got worse. 